So it's welcome to round six of It's a Knockout 1982. Thank you for that rhapsodic, unscripted welcome. Thank you. <laughs> but indeed, welcome to Chippenham, where the sun is high in the sky, and we have this glorious swimming pool. And would you believe, for the first time in the entire history of knockout, the water is heated. But now, to assist me in today's proceedings, welcome, please, Mr. Tom O'Connor. Well, Tom, come. Oh, nice to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And can I say, Stuart, it's a pleasure to be out here in the sun with all these lovely folks, all the mums and dads with the youngsters. Have you seen them? Yes. You can always tell English mums and dads with the kids because they get a hand each on the kid and they swing them like that. <laughs> it's all little kids here, two foot high and eight foot arms. <laughs> but it's a pleasure to be with you in British sunshine. Isn't this British sunshine wonderful? Doesn't this be going to Spain? Yeah. yeah. We're not sure about that. Oh, Spain. I, I can't cope with that Spanish sun. I'm glad we've stayed here, because you, you get our lads in the sun in Spain, and they're all the same colour, lobster red, and, and they all walk around with that funny walk. Have you seen them in Spain, our lads, you know? Don't touch me. Don't. <laughs> and, and you get the fellow who's fell asleep in the sun with his clothes on, and he's got a red head, you know, like a match. And it's so different to be with all these nice folks, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to hand back to you now. You to are going to your marathon, but before you go, let's just welcome the teams. Everything is colour-coded. First of all, the team in green of Russell and Y. <laughs> Little faint applause. But in yellow, we have the team of Gloucester. <laughs> and, listen to this, the home team of Chippen, in the red. And so we come to game one. Now look at these for ships. I saw three ships go sailing by. And nearest to us, we have Gloucester, Ross in the middle, and on the other end, Chippenham. Two guys, and they have to paddle their own canoe. As you see, the paddles propel the boat, but they also steer it. And you've got to be very, very careful, especially when you get down to the bottom end. It's there, and it's back. A straight race unfolding as everything does on Arthur's whistle. Arthur! Go, Ross! Three, two, one! Go! Well, the cheers for Chippenham. Well, that's right away into a lead. A slight lead for Gloucester. And you see now the game. You have to keep it straight. The two guys have to virtually run along in unison. That's the Gloucester boat. Keith Irwin and Mike Wilmot. They're both admirals. Well, we've got one admiral and one commander. <laughs> there's, no, there's no chief of staff here this afternoon. They both have to paddle exactly the same. Gloucester in the lead from Chippenham, from Ross on one. The Gloucester boat still. You can see the lead, it's about half a ship. No tone displayed so far, but some astonishing ones will be played this afternoon. Gloucester. Now watch this very carefully, ladies and gentlemen, because the man on the inside stays still, or that feather is. The man on the outside goes like the clappers. Gloucester and Ray. That's the shot. You can see the Gloucester leave a nice straight way, a straight blind. Chippenham the second. Well, the Chippenham cheers. So it's Gloucester, crewed by Keith and Mike. One's an oarsman. The others in electronics. 
Keith with the beard, Commander, and the Admiral on the other side. But it's it's Ross coming up on Chippenham. Ross the finish first. From Chippenham. <laughs> well, here come Chippenham to finish. And it's Ross. Arthur comes galloping in, and a deathly hush descends on the stadium. He's arrived, and he says, And the winners, Gloucester, in second place, Chippenham, and in third place, Ross on wide. Now the point. First of all, let's welcome Ashley on the scoreboard. She twinkles around, the little fairy puts up the points. Two points to Chippenham. Two to Chippenham. Three points to Gloucester. Three points to Gloucester. One point to Ross on Wild. One point to Ross on Wild. Game two. Eager Beavers, Paul of Gloucester, Chris of Chippenham. On the whistle, dive into the pool, swim to the other side. You see the two ropes. By assisting them, the teammates here come straight across the pool. A little like a commando exercise. But first of all, I espy out of the core of my little right eye, the Chippenham Joker, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, sir, just a little word about the Chippenham Joker. Well, Stuart, people travel from near and far to see the delightful beauty spots in North Wiltshire, and Miriam the Camel's having a touring holiday, uh, visiting such delightful spots as Malmesbury, Laycock, and Castle Coombe. And on board is Sally Dix, and that's the Camel's lunch. The Camel is going to eat you for lunch. We'll just come and say hello to the camel. Hello, Miriam. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. She's just having a quiet nibble at the microphone. And Sally, you're very brave up there. Just have a little shake of the hands, because it's very important, your Chippenham Joker, isn't it? Are you going to win it? Yes. You're not too sure, are you? No, she's not too sure. Not too sure, but she says yes. Let us see as the game unfolds, as everything does on Arthur's whistle. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> As quick as you can on the other side. In the yellow blaster. And in the red, chip it on the joker. Once they get to the other side, they tauten the rope and the girls come across. We have three girls from each team. First of all, the Gloucester. So, for Chippenham, going across like Grease Lightning, we have Dawn Freer, who's a PTI in the RAF. For Gloucester, we have Carolyn. Chippenham have one across, the game is three girls across, then the rest of the team who are forming the pyramid. Dawn Freer, this is Karen. And the rules are, you must not touch the water. Karen Colley, also in the REF, a telecommunications operator. This is it, Karen Colley in the red, with the mob cap. Come on, Gloucester. No, she's touched the water again. The Chippenham Joker looking absolutely safe. One minute to go. And this is Lynn coming across. No, it's not. It's Sharon. Gloucester in all sorts of trouble. And when you've dropped in the aqua, the clothing weighs a ton. It's important to get across with your dry stuff. If she keeps going, for Chippenham, this is Sharon. They keep the rope taut. The three boys of Chippenham, Chris, Huey, and Kevin. And when she's safely on the far side, they'll break loose. The Chippenham Joker about to be played and won 
when those three guys are safely on the other side, standing on the mat. That'll be it. They'll all stand up when the joke is finished. Gloucester are still struggling. They're out of the pool. The limit tide is coming up. Well, Much rejoicing. Yes. And Arthur says. Yes, Chippenham are the winners. They got all the people across. <laughs> Three points to Chippenham. They played this Yorker doubly up to six. Six points to Chippenham. Six points to Chippenham. What a flying start. A joker beautiful play. Two points to Gloucester. Two to Gloucester. <laughs> Ross and Y won them for the first round of the Barrows and is with you, Tom. Thank you, Stuart. And over here at the marathon now, we've got uh, the first of our three jolly sailors, as you can see. Starting from my left-hand side here, from Chippenham, we've got Les Jeffries. Hi, Les. You okay? Just about. Just about, says Les. He's inside there somewhere. Next to him for Gloucester, we have uh, Barry Evans. Is that right, Barry? Yeah, that's right. Welcome, and uh, keep yourself together a second while I just speak to Ross on Wise contestant, who's in, right in here somewhere, Gerald. Hi, Gerald. All right, yeah. Okay, mate. Now, these three, these three... Jolly sailors, as you can see, have got to come down quite a tricky marathon course. They come down this hill here, and believe me, it's hard enough going up it in ordinary clothes. What they're going to be like coming down in that gear, I don't know. They come right through here, past this wonderful crowd of folks. Right. First couple of obstacles right here, because this comes into a flat surface, and then two huge steps, you see. You could black out coming down them, I'll tell you. Right. The second obstacle is Arthur, who stood on here. <laughs> we get round him, they're doing well. <laughs> Finally, they've got to come along here, which is a long, narrow straight, but the hard part is yet to come, because when they get to here with those great big boots on and all the big, hat big heads and hats and things, they've got to actually get themselves onto these hammocks here. The idea is to end up on this hammock with both feet off the floor. Uh, which should be a challenge, and right now we're going to see if they're up to it. It's all against the clock, and we're going to hand back to Mike for the start. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> and up they go. And it's Gloucester in a slight lead, I think, yes. Gloucester, no, they're just being passed by Ross on Y. They've come to the first tricky bit, which is a slight uh, flat surface. Now that's shaking them a bit because it takes a bit of time to adjust, and down goes Chippenham. Chippenham's down head first, and he's rolling about there. He's having a lot of trouble. Ross has reached the level, so has Gloucester, and this is the first big problem. Sideway. Well, what a good jump by Ross on White. And down again. Now round Arthur Ellis. That's a challenge. Oh, Arthur Nobbly. Very nasty work, that Arthur. He put the boot in on Ross, I think. And here comes Gloucester. This oh! What a shame! I've seen some drunken sailors in my time. And me meanwhile, out ahead, we've got Russell White streaking off to his hammock. He must go to the hammock of his own colour, which is green. And Gloucester vainly trying to get up again. Ross, meantime, is right there. A late run from Chippenham. Ross is about to sit down. And we got... He's there, we think. Gloucester's on the move again. And... Ross is down, we've got both feet still to one foot's off the floor, and there he is! Gloucester's still making heavy weather of it, but he's nearly there. He's got one little step to negotiate, he's over that. He's got to go down on the yellow hammock, and he's going on it. Yes, now the feet off the foot, one up. And, oh yes! Yes, Gloucester's there, Chippenham is racing towards them. There's a late burst of speed here. My God, he's going to fall on me. I can't. Just get it out of the way there. I thought we were going to have an accident now then. Somebody's tied his laces together. That's what's happening. Eh? Oh, nearly. But never. No, a round of applause. A big cheer for Chippenham. Ah, oh, look. It just looks like my dad on a Saturday night. Now, now then. Mike. Mike's got some scores for us. Well, as you can see, Chippenham didn't complete the course, so we must give them the maximum time of two minutes. So it's two minutes to Chippenham. He'll be very pleased when he comes round to hear that. <laughs> two minutes, and up go the two minutes on the board there. Gloucester. So Gloucester completed the course in one minute, 42 seconds. So that's quite a good, that's quite a good time, really, uh, considering he had a bit of an accident. And now, Ross on Y. Ross on Y completed the course in one minute, 23 seconds. 
123 to Ross on Y, a really good score that. I think they deserve a louder cheer than that. Come on, a big cheer for Ross on Y. So 123 and back to you, Stuart. Well, thank you very much indeed, John. We come now to our next very game on the pool. And it is virtually a rowing exercise between Ross and Gloucester. The two stalwarts have to row these flimsy, lightweight craft down the pool, picking up as they go their five team members, and then they return. And that is where the hijinks come in. But, ladies and gentlemen, especially the top brass stand, here is the Gloucester Joker. Hey! Played by a most elegant, though rather foppish gentleman entitled... King Richard III, and you should kneel before a royal person. I will, but I'm afraid of written me trousers. Yes, they are a bit... Thin. They are a bit tight. And what about this monster at the side of you? What is it? It looks like an overripe tomato. What this is it? This is Mr. Centre, the uh, logo of the Leisure Centre in Gloucester. And inside there is Ian Coles, one of the Leisure Centre staff. What a fine pair of cows. Now then, if you care to exit right, Your Majesty, I shall call upon King Arthur to start this race. Ready? Three, two, one, off they go, and where are the Gloucester cheers? Just a few. The Gloucester boat, everything colour-coded, of course, contains a gentleman called Keith Irwin with the horizontal yellow and white the stripes. On the other side, we have a gentleman there, just rowing into view, called Tom Jenkins. The Joker being played on Keith Irwin of Gloucester. Picking up the teammates as they go. And of course, Gloucester, one of the oldest cities in the country. Lying in the lush Cassetta Vale, situate between the glorious hot rose and the lovely forest of Dean. Goes back a lot further than Richard, of course. The Roman city of Glamour was planted here in AD 96. The Ross on Y boat looking very, 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 very almost in danger of capsizing. They can see the jeopardy. Lost to a pace. Turn round. But could there be a surprise in the offing? It's a neck and necker. Everybody is paddling for Ross. Whilst Gloucester relying on the talents of Mr. Keith Irwin. And it's going to be Gloucester. It's going to be Gloucester, so the cheerleaders can emote. And it's, it's an easy win for younger women, is Mary Cool. Come round here, you Gloucester people. While Arthur tells you, Keith, come here, you mighty man, stand between us. You have won your joker. Now then, listen to Arthur's pronouncement. Prepare to jump a mile high. <laughs> the winners, Gloucester. The points? Three points to Gloucester. They played the joker. They up to six. Six points to Gloucester. Six points to Gloucester makes the grand total for them 11. 11 coming up any second, and there it is. Two points to Ross on Y. And two points to Ross on Y. So chip and a mate, lost to 11, Ross on Y 3, and on to the next merry game. And we're coming to Mike Abbott and Jackie Ovens in a tub for Ross on Y. And they have to virtually spin that tub in a clockwise direction to roll in the wire which is underneath, whilst Mike is pulling it in with another rope. It's a straight race, all three teams go, and Arthur says... Ready? Three, two, one... <laughs> They spin clockwise and Ross and Y could do with the points. A lot of enthusiasm coming from Orioles this afternoon. Much of it, of course, for chipping them in the middle. Mike Abbott, the jockey. Big strong man this afternoon. Ooh, three super teams. Trained to a peak of physical fitness, the like of which you seldom see. Ross almost over. Chipperham in the lead from Gloucester. 
Ross. Oh, who's there? The going to get it. About 16 stone of Mike Abbott hold it back, but they're in grave danger again. Chippenham in the lead. Lee Robinson of the RAF and Grand Fear of the RAF. And on the far side of Gloucester, coming up on the ropes, Nigel Phelps. Let's have a look at Nigel Phelps because he's quite famous in Gloucester, in the yellow. And is he going to win it because he, he was married only yesterday? <laughs> married at noon yesterday and playing his heart out for Gloucester. Well, if you couldn't have it closer than this. It's going to be touching. It's going to be Chippenham if they can stay afloat. Chippenham it is. Chippenham from Gloucester. Ross coming in now. Come on, a little applause for Ross. Sympathetic applause, come on. And Arthur comes trotting in. Chippenham the winners in second place, Gloucester. Third place, Ross and Wyan. The points. The points. Three points to Chippenham. Three points to Chippenham. Two points to Gloucester. Two points to Gloucester. One point to Ross on Y. One point to Ross on Y. Chippenham 11, Gloucester 13, Ross on Y 4, and once again with you, Tom. Thanks, Stuart. Well, actually, while all that was going on, I came all the way through the marathon course, dressed as a sailor, all on my own. I've taken it all off, and here I am in split second, about 15 seconds, didn't I? Oh, yes, I did. Well, maybe I didn't. Anyway, we're on to the second round of the marathon. We're ready to start, so it's over to Mike. Three, two, one. And we've got two runners here from the first round, actually. We've still got with us Gerald Bird from Ross on Y. And actually, he's in the, in the lead at the moment, Gerald. He's, yes, he's, he's still on his feet. He's going well. We've got Barry Evans still with us from Gloucester. Running at the back there at the present moment from Chippenham, the local boy, we've got David Oakley. So here we go. Ross on Y in the lead, and he's down. A good lead and down again and he's away here round Arthur nudge nudge and he's past Arthur and he's away on the home straight fairly close behind we've got Gloucester that's Barry Evans running again as I say the second time he's still on his feet and here's the local boy David Oakley and he's down let's hear a cheer for the chip and the boy Ross on wide streaks ahead again He's there, this fellow knows how to do it. He's remembered from the last time. He's on the hammock and there's one leg up in the air and two and Ross on Wyatt done it again. Gloucester coming in, a very close second. He's done it again, one leg's up and, and again. So it's all on Chippenham now, who's got two minutes to beat. David Oakley, local boy. One more cheer for Chippenham, come on. Little bit of a stumble, and let's see if we can blow him over. Are we there? Yes, seconds are ticking away, but he's... He's near, he's down, and the feet, and the feet off the floor, one, and yes! The feet left the floor while the head hit the floor. Right, Mike, we got some scores. We have, yes. Chippenham did well that time. They completed the course in 1 minute 45 seconds. Right, what about that? David Oakley, 1 minute 45. Chippenham. So 1.45, Ashley's about to put up on the board. And of course, this is the time to remind you that in the marathon, we do double the scores. That's right, isn't it, Mike? That's correct, yes. Yes. So here we go. 1 minute 45 seconds going up. Not, not a bad score. Gloucester had a super run. They improved their time. One minute, 20 seconds. One twenty to Gloucester. That's a really good time, and it's faster than uh, Ross on Y's first leg. So uh, Barry Evans has learned something from the first run, and now we go on to Ross on Y. An even better time. Ross on Y bettered their first time. One minute and eight seconds. Wow! One minute and eight, that's a really fast time. I mean, that'll take some beating, I think, Mike, on the next leg. Looks a pretty, pretty good par for the course, yeah. I would say so. The same fellow's done two very fast times on the run. Well, thanks, Ashley, and back to you, Stuart, for the moment. 
Well, there is uh, Moncton House standing in uh, Moncton Park. It's the area in Chippenham where people come to play. And what better than to play in this swimming pool, which has been beautifully renovated for our games today. And I tell you, it is heated to a temperature of around about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, suspended above the pool, the great big diving board, and just slightly in front of the diving board, a good jump, in fact, because the cameras do foreshorten, is the life belt. We have five members of the Ross team got to jump onto the lifeboat and then cascade down that pool and jump on the raft. The game is over when all five are on the raft. It is a mighty dangerous game for people of steely will and iron resource. Arthur, let's get Ross on their way. Three, two, one. Howard of Ross goes. Will he stay on or will he come off? Well done. That was brilliant. It's important to land your first competitor on because then there's some grip for the second, third, fourth and fifth. Now, Ian Gray, a plumber, with good grip. He's on course for number two. This is a super run by Ross and Y, and it's just about time because they're well behind on the points. Their joker, of course, could be played, but four on the master score, but isn't good enough yet for them. Two minutes of a game. Helen Watkins will go now. And in the beautiful town, Ross and Y, she makes saddles. She makes a leap, stakes hold. Lots of whoops and oohs, will she stay? She's gone. Big Nigel. He's a copper. That's the scene as he hauls on the rope to bring the belt back to base. He has to make the jump. Arthur's looking at the watch. Come on, Nigel. Go now! Oh, I missed it! <laughs> Give him some applause. Come on, it was a good run there. Come on, on the back. <laughs> well, I thought they were going to, all, going to get all five on. So did I. But Ross and Wire, they landed three on, and that's not too bad. Three on in limit time. Mike Wilmot of Gloucester heads the team. Arthur. Ready? Three, two, one. It's absolutely critical to get your man on. I think we should descend with the first of the girls. Leave it, leave it, let him do This is Lynn. Lynn Parker hyphen Dodd. She looked a trifle petrified as well she might. It's one heck of a way up and. It's a fairly hefty jump from the board into the belt. We're on, off, and running. This to equalize for Ross. This is Carolyn. Uh, surfing, but she can't do any surfing today. She's got to be clean on. If she touches the water, she's out. She comes down. It's all good. And the time after. How many for time? One minute fifteen. One minute fifteen. More, more now. One twenty. One twenty. One twenty-five. Come on, Paul Stanbrook. He's got to haul it back. Swing down. You'll notice he's wearing a bandage on his leg. He hurt himself earlier on, but insists on playing as they all do when they get the knockout. Did this for a good win, possibly? 
He's in. And is he on? He's on. Give him some applause then. Come on. That was one heck. That yes. was. And the Gloucester got all five people on in one minute, 45 seconds. Yes, a very laudable performance. Chipping up ready. Ready. Three, two, one. Off we go. Lee Robinson from the RAF, a very German man indeed. You've got nothing away. He's on. A flying start for Chippers. Chris Ash. They need five on with a time of less than 1.45. He's got a stick. Two out of five. The first of the girls. It's going to be Sally. Another competitor. I bet you like to see a lot of better. Oh, oh, oh. Sally. Is she on? Is she on? Is she off? She's on, she's got three. Heart stopping moments, this is Dawn Freer. Take your time, Dawn. She's in. What a chocolate this is. Pinky eye. Oh, 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 oh. Straight on Sally's head. The time after the time. One twenty-five. We've got fifteen seconds to get on. This is Huey. Sometime Adrian Decorator. He's lost his hat. He's coming on. This could be a victory. He's on. Right, and the time for Chippenham, 1 minute 41 seconds. 1.41! And the points. Three points to Chippenham. Three points to Chippenham. Two points to Gloucester. Two points to Gloucester. Somebody go. No, you're right, stay with me. One point to Ross on Y. One point to Ross on Wise, the battle now really joined between Chippenham and Gloucester. Chippenham 14, Gloucester 15, Ross on Wye with only five. And whilst we are performing here, we are being secretly photographed by a charming young lady whose name is... Susan. Susan what now? Trebek. How old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. And who is supporting? Chippenham. Ch any more Chippenham supporters here? Oh! Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, I know how to say the right thing, don't worry about it. But we come now to the great horse and jockey race. Because here, lined up, we have the three horses of Gloucester, of Chippenham, and Ross on Y. And by now, you will know that inside here, we've got a couple of guys, haven't we? Are you all right in there? Just about here. Confident? No. Confident. <laughs> that is Ross on Y saying they are not very confident. At the other end, through the hurdles, are the jockeys, and they have to be brought back. Arthur. Ready? Three, two, one. So the nags go down the course. <laughs> and you love this one. We pick up the jockey. We're going to come back. All three jockeys. Their jockeys have to go through the rings. And we mustn't touch the board. Gloucester first. Chippenham second. Equal loss on wire. Let's have a look at the red race. The great national at the swimming pool in Chippenham. The horses go back. Red rum on the left going through now. There's the green goddess. <laughs> and coming back, yellow fever of Gloucester. And the odds at the moment seem to be about three to one against uh, Gloucester. Five to one on the red rum. And green goddess, it could be anything. The well start. Man, your own prize. Gloucester have two jockeys back on. Chippenham coming too. Poor old Ross, look at that. <laughs> your life depends on getting through a hoop and onto a horse's back. That was looking. That's Jane of Ross. But Gloucester coming in. What's the Gloucester team? Because they're going to win it. 
But all three are on that are on now. That's a good victory for Gloucester. <laughs> this, oh boy, go on Helen, finish it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here they come, look at that. The hoofs everywhere. Helen's hanging on and she's a saddler as well. There's Ross collapse. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, come on. Yes. Uh, Gloss for the winners in second place, Chippenham, in third place, Ross and Wine. Yes. And the points. Yes. Two points to Chippenham. Two points to Chippenham makes them 16. Three points to Gloucester. Makes them 18. One point to Ross and Wine. Makes them six. The battle joined once again with you, Tom, on the marathon. Thanks, Stuart. And back at the marathon, this is the last time through. And, of course, it can't be one time too many for Barry Evans because he's still inside that Gloucester sailor up there. Right now, though, it's over to Mike for a very important start. Everything could depend on the result of this marathon. Over to you, Mike. Attention. Three, two, one. Down the come and Barry's away again. He's in front. Oh, dear. Chippenham's gone. Gloucester's gone on top of him. Mike's going in amongst them, they're rolling down the hill, we've stopped one of them. Ross on Y is scuttling along on the outside there. Here he comes, Barry Evans has done it again, he's onto the flat, he's down of the flat. Onto the next little hill. Gloucester's up and after him. Shippenham's having a bit of trouble on the flat, but I think he's through it now. He's coming down backwards, that's novel. Gloucester have just sneaked into a lead here. Right, so Gloucester come to the first big step. This is a tricky one, and it's a leap. And he's down, he's down two feet together, and down again. And Gloucester, for a good five, six yards in the lead as he goes around me. Well done, there he goes. Behind him comes Barry Evans from Ross on Y. He's another jump. He's, yes, he's over that one. Shipping him in all kinds of trouble. There's, there's real feet coming out of those boots now. Barry's just rounding me. Meantime, Gloucester is streaking away. Whoa, and hang on, just a minute. Oh, I'll smack your legs. Right. We've got... We've got Shipping along, but while all that's been happening, while all that's been happening, Gloucester is down with two feet off the floor, Chippenham's right behind him, and we've still got a boot on the floor, Chippenham, I think, do we? Chippenham's boots up, and Ross on Y is just about to land, oh, never mind, never mind, okay. And that was really exhausting. I think you'll agree. What about one big cheer for three very, very brave sailors? Yeah, let's give them all a cheer. Yeah. <laughs> By Jove, they worked out. Look at the state of them lying there. Eh? <laughs> like our house on a Sunday afternoon. Eh? But here comes Mike with the results. Yes, well, although Chippenham completed the course, he did it without his boot on, and he was told he'd got to replace it. So we have to give him the maximum time for that run. So their score stays at 1.45. So 1.45 for Chippenham. Gloucester completed the course in uh, 1 minute 34, but, but it didn't improve their previous time of 1.20, so that stays. So nothing moves for Gloucester, so at the moment they're in second place at 1 minute 20, and... Ross on Y were out of time, but they still have the best time of 1.08. 108 to Ross on Y, which means that they've won the marathon. Let's have a cheer for Ross on Y. Thank you. And now, Mike, the all-important... Yes, we can transfer the points to the Master Scoreboard. For Chippenham, two points. That makes Chippenham 18, right. For Gloucester, four points. Four to Gloucester. That brings them up into 22, which is... There we are, 22 to Gloucester. And for Ross on Y, six points. Into double figures, Ross on Y, making them 12. And that's the marathon, and back to you, Stuart. Thank you, Tom, but there's a shark in the pool. Ooh, cries of shock, horror, and damn. And poor Louise of Ross 
is going to be pursued by the shark. <gasps> but don't worry about it. She won't be eaten alive. She's going to be saved by Chris Ash of Chipperham. <laughs> There's the story in plot form. But now, at long last, we have the Joker from Ross on Y. And we see that here, the central figure of this little playlet is a hedgehog. And we'll just turn him round once so you can see <gasps> the spines. Right, good luck to the Ross Jokers. I say to Arthur once again the immortal words. Ready? Three, two, one. The wheels is away. Sued shortly on a second blast of the whistle. It's a fair way up the pool. Louise has to get as far as possible pursued by this nasty, horrible, voracious, man-eating shark. But here's Chris Ash of Tippenham. The captain of Tippenham Football Club. And the time is given to the pursuer. So this is the Tippenham time that we're looking for. The faster Louise swims with the shark. Because, as you have guessed by now, the game ends when Tippenham touched the shark. The Ross Joker being played. <laughs> the urging on little Chris, who's tiring. Give him a cheer, he's tiring. He's overhauled. Louise is tiring too. Here comes Chris. He's got four yards to make up. This is critical. Because Chippenham need to get three points out of this to bring him 21. They can't afford to let Gloucester get any further. He's within touching distance and he touches. No! Oh! Chippenham caught the shark in one minute, 40 seconds. One minute, 40 seconds. And now for Chippenham, we have Sally Wright and... She dives off on your whistle. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> she needs some words and cheers of encouragement. The name is Sally. On the previous heat, Louise made the first raft at the end of the pool before the opposition was released. The opposition and the Joker being played. Miss Sally Wright. Pursued by the shark. And as you look now in the water, you will see a young man called Gerald of Ross who's overhauling her for the Joker. It's a case because Gerald is called Bird. It's a case of the Chippenham Shark getting the bird. Oh! Cries of despair. And that a shark getting the bird. Ross and Y caught the shark in 55 seconds. Ross and Y are the winners. And the points. Two points to Chippenham. Two points to Chippenham. They're grossing 20. Three points to Ross on Y, they played the Joker, double it up to six. Six points to Ross on Y. Eighteen for Ross on Y, it couldn't be closer. Chippenham 20, Gloucester 22, Ross on Y 18, and on to our last gigantic game. And down the pool, they knock out fleet of three sailing boats. <laughs> and there they are, built by our mad designer, Stuart Ferber. And we need to put sails on them. The sails are on three rafts. Four sails. There are the sails. There are the players. The first sail is the topsail, and that is sail number one. Let the game unfurl, and the sails too, on Arthur's whistle. Ready? Three, two, one. The players are attached. With a little harness, they go up to the top. Chippenham. Up first, then Gloucester. But Ross of Y hold the key. 
to this contest and best plus to put it outright. That's the important one, the top seed number one. Zipperton going up for the second sale. Chipperton, let's have a look at it. He's, he's well in the lead now, and that is Little Tommy. No, it's not. It's uh, Hugh Yeldon. Little Tommy is for Russell Wilde. Gloucester in the yellow. Colour coding. Gloucester have to finish last, and Chipperton have to win it for a tie for the privilege of going to Belgium, to the ancient town of Guinness. Chippenham in the lead, coming for the third sale. They're doing everything that's required of them, but it may be a little too late. Huey Irwin, sometime pension decorator of Chippenham. And Ross. Ross on their second sale. They come from left to right. Gloucester. And the yellow Gloucester in the green. Ross on wide. But Chippenham coming for the win. Down comes Huey Irwin. He has two eyes to hook on to. And if they win it, and it looks very likely. They can't do any more than win it, and they've got three points. Makes them 23. Chippenham have won it. But now Ross has to shade out Gloucester, and I don't think they will. I think Gloucester have come second. And if Gloucester have come second, it means they've got 24 points to Chippenham's 23, but I won't prejudge this game at all. It's all on Arthur. Arthur's about to blow. Well, we've made certain that all the clips are fastened, so the sales are correct. Now, the winners of the game are Chippenham. In second place, Gloucester. Third place, Russell White. Now the points. Three points to Chippenham. Three points to Chippenham. They finish with 23. Two points to Gloucester. Two points to Gloucester. They do, in fact, win with 24. And one point to Ross on White. One point to Ross on White with 19. And for the celebrations at the scoreboard, let's join Tom. Thanks, Stuart. Well, of course, that's congratulations to Gloucester, who are our winners. And, and here comes the Mayor of Gloucester, Councillor Roger Langston. Welcome, sir. Thank and you very much. Congratulations on a marvellous win. Thank you very much indeed. And here you are, here's your trophy. This is your It's a Knockout Winners trophy. What about one more big cheer for Gloucester, yes? And what about one for Ross on Y? And one more for Chippenham? Congratulations, sir. Well done. Well, thank you, Tom. Let's now run down the scoreboard. John Wood are going to play in Caprera in Italy. Keswick are going to play in Zsebenik in Yugoslavia. Christchurch will play in Issy de Moulineau in Paris, France. Loch Gilpède will play in Tesseret in Switzerland. Rotherham will play in Madeira in Portugal. And today's winners, Gloucester will play in that lovely city of Ghent in Belgium. And West Dorset will represent us in our own international in Sherburn in Great Britain. Next week, it is the joust of all jousts when all domestic winners meet in the Knockout Championship 1982 from Charnock Richard. Well, Tom, what about that? My lad, What, what a wonderful afternoon. I really and enjoyed that. Wasn't it smashing? Yes, and thanks for letting me be on the show. I thought it was marvellous. It really was. You must come back again. Please. Yeah, soon. What a battle. So now, we say thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of Chippenham, of Ross and Gloucester, and we say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> The stakes are high for gambler Robbie Box next on gold. Ray Brooks and Sharon Dew star in Big Deal.